Hi, this is Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, coming to you from the south of Turkey. And today's Patton Power Podcasting point is confidence. Everyone says you have to have confidence in order to achieve something. And confidence is a two-edged sword. You see, when somebody tells us something with confidence, our brains hardwired to believe them. They may be lying. They may be wrong. So we go and we follow the people that are incredibly confident in what they're doing or what they're saying. And they're telling you, this is the thing to do. And they're confident and you believe them. And it's a very, very difficult thing to change because it's, like I said, it's one of those things that's hardwired into us. And I've seen it on two occasions um, where it was really quite distressing, right, to be quite honest. And once was in the UK and there was a group of about 35 or 50 people in this room and all these people went up and spoke. I was one of the people that went up and spoke. And there was a rumor going around that Americans could not sell to Englishmen. And then this young 30-ish, very handsome, very tall American got up and he did his hour-long presentation. And at the end of it, the vast majority of the people ran to the back of the room and they brought it, bought his product. Two years later, I'm at an event over in North America somewhere and someone comes up to me and says, uh, you know, Scott, you were in that room. I was in that room. Yeah, <clears throat> I bought, he says. I go, OK, well, it's been two years. Uh, it was in beta. They told us that it's still in beta. It doesn't look like anything's happening. And I just wasted five thousand dollars. So can you help me? Well, why do you think I could help you? Well, you were an, an, a speaker, too. So, you know, you, you know him. I says, it was the first time I met him. And. It really was an, quite a, an experience for me because I saw this guy get up and he was incredibly confident in what he was doing. He had this great story, he had this great backstory, and he had this great vision. And of course, those were all the things that the people in the room wanted. So they ran to the back of the room and they were disappointed. A few years ago, a couple of years ago, I was in a small room again, about 30 people in, in Vancouver, and there was... I don't know, six people that got up and spoke. One of them had been getting up and speaking for like 30 years. And you could tell the difference between him and the other speakers was night and day when it came to evaluating the quality of their talk. And he was incredibly confident. And as I watched all the not so confident speakers get up and talk, there would be one or nobody go to the back of the room. But the second that this fellow got up there and started talking, there was a rush to the back of the room. I want you to take a minute here and introduce you to Duke. Duke is my buddy. Hi, Duke. He's coming to help me with my presentation. So at the end of the experienced speaker's talk, what did he do? He watched as everybody ran to the back of the room to get his stuff. One person didn't, a friend of mine. And I didn't. And my friend said, well, uh, uh, you're not going to get this, Scott? And I go, no. And he says, are you going to get it? And he's, I said to him, are you going to get it? And he says, no. He says, I bought something from him 20 years ago. Didn't work then. Not going to work now. I learned my lesson. And so, so it, was a, it, was a sad, it was a sad commentary, right? And the fact is, is that if you have a thousand people buy your program, there's going to be a number of people that follow it, that work it very religiously, and they are very successful. The vast majority of people aren't going to do that. And a lot of speakers will say, that's the reason why I don't take responsibility for the success of my students. Although I'm quite happy to plaster all my successful students' testimonials all over the place to, to get everybody else to buy. So what to do, right? And uh, the other day, you know, I kind of had a backhanded objection given to me through back doors. Like it wasn't the person, it was somebody else. And it was like, well, 
Scott's traveling the world and, you know, is he making any money with this Udemy stuff and the, the uh, videos and everything else? And, well, you know, I'm not making a million dollars, but I'm making enough to do what I want to do with my life. And to me, that's important. And depending on where you are in your life, that may not be important. You know, when you're in your 20s and 30s, you're thinking about starting a family. You're thinking about creating a wealth. You've got these huge goals. I had them all. And uh, you want to, you know, change the world and create all these things and, and become a multi-billionaire. <clears throat> when you get into your 40s and 50s, it, uh, it changes a bit. And certainly when you're in your 60s, <laughs> You kind of laugh at it, but hey, it's the folly of youth, right? The thing is, is that the people that fall for the confidence men, the con man, which these guys are, and maybe we all are, is uh, because they don't know what they want, right? You don't, they don't know what their goals are. They, and, and these change. When you're in your 20s and when you're in your 40s and when you're in your 60s, your goals are all completely different. And you need to be able to accept that. But... If you think, when I'm 60, you know, what am I going to be wanting? And start, you know, you, your mind will give you some answers to that question. You can move forward. But the people that really aren't sure of what it is that they want, except they want something that they don't have, uh, they jump at these things, and they jump at these things. And I don't want anybody jumping at anything. In fact, when I'm talking to people about online video courses, I'm very, very clear that uh, it's work. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people think, well, I can just do one course and I'd be fine. And certainly there is somebody that made one course and has made a million dollars off of it. There's no doubt about that. But that's one person out of seven billion, not a high degree of probability that that's going to be you or me. And so I put together my plan. I work my plan and away you go. <clears throat> the biggest problem I think that a lot of people have is that they don't know how to say no or they're afraid of no. Right, The people that want to make a sale are afraid to ask for the sale because they're afraid they're going to get no. The people that are asked to buy give these silly little objections instead of just saying like, no, you don't have to explain why you don't want to do something. You just have to be clear that you do or do not want to do that and then go from there. Which brings us to the biggest problem that we have in today's society. Everybody has bought into the instantaneous uh, delivery on demand mentality that's been peddled to the world for the last 30 years that they've lost sight of a very, very important aspect of life. Quiet. Peace. Not a lot of things running around here. Certainly no cars, no planes, no uh, trains, no buses, no people. I'm in the middle of nowhere, basically, on the south coast of Turkey. It's incredibly nice. And you can stay in touch, but you don't have to stay in touch 24-7. And what happens when you do that is you have time to think. Right now in our society, we have no time to think. We don't have time to sit and be with ourselves and say, you know, this is what I really want to do. And you think you know what it is you really want to do, but you don't really know. Because if you really knew, then when someone comes up to you with an opportunity that is not aligned with what it is that you want, you would say no. But you don't, because you're afraid of no, and you really don't know what you want. You kind of have an idea, and you kind of have a feeling. And of course, when people tap into giving you that feeling, then you think that's the same thing as what it is that you want. I think it's very important that people take time on a daily basis to sit with a piece of paper and just write and say, you know, this is what I want. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. This is the way I want to set my plan. And it doesn't have to work out the way you write down, write it down. And in fact, you can set up a plan to not have a plan. OK, like I'm on this trip and I've been to London, Morocco. Sicily, Rome, Athens, the west coast of Greece, the south coast of Turkey, Bodrum, Kos. I'm going to be going to Rhodes in a week. Uh, and most of it is totally by chance, like God's will, because I said, I'm going to go and do it this way. And whatever doors open, doors open. 
And now that I've been three months on the road, I've discovered that I have a real problem because I'm nowhere where there's a good internet connection I need it. So one of the things that popped to the top of my list was co-working spaces that had fast internet. And where did one pop up? Macedonia, <laughs> of all places. I can't even say the name of the city. It starts with an S and it ends with a J-E or something. I'm going to be going there for a week to 10 days uh, in about in the next month. Okay, And why? It's because it has a fast internet. I need to get to a fast internet. I have a lot of things that I, I want to do that require a fast internet. So all of a sudden that becomes a priority. And because it's a priority, someplace I never dreamt I would ever go, I'm going. And I'm really excited because I've learned a bit about the city. I've learned a bit about the country. I've been in touch with the people in the co-working space. They're so excited for me to come. They said, oh, we would like love for you to have, we'd love to have an event and we want you to come and speak to everybody about all the stuff that you know, or some of the stuff that you know, or a little bit of the stuff that you know. And uh, the enthusiasm is kind of infectious, right? And it just so happens that in, or, well, anyway, there's lots of stories about how I'm going to get there that's not really very direct. Uh, but the point is, is that you, you need to know what it is that you really want to do in life. I want to explore Europe in 2017. In 2018, I'm not so keen on exploring Europe. I want to explore Africa. But I may still spend some time in Europe. I mean, I'm not saying no to whatever comes about. So I have a specific goal for the year. I have a specific goal for the next three years and for the next 10 years. And they're very different goals, right? And it's okay. To, it's not being wishy-washy or anything else. I'm very, very clear on what it is that I want to do and how I want to do it. What I notice is not very many other people are, right? So they end up doing stuff and then they end up when they've achieved it, being very unhappy about their achievement, which is a very sad thing when you think about it, right? It may be that, well, it always is what they got at the end is not what they thought they would get, which is fine. Like we, It's not even a mistake, right? It's just part of the growth of life and growing and becoming a better human being is you do all these things. The more you do, whether you like it or don't like it, the more you're going to grow, the better off you're going to be. The problem arises when we're hardwired to believe the people who are confident and we don't believe the people that are honest. I don't know how well you're going to do on your video course. In fact, I would probably say you're going to do terrible on it, right? Because there's a lot more to selling video courses than just getting up in front of a camera and talking. That's why one of the things I say is what is your back end? Like, what is your, your goal cannot be to have a video course. Your goal has to be coaching, selling your book, selling workshops, selling masterminds, um, selling more courses, traveling the world and talking about, you know, get a speaking gigs. Like one of my friends uh, contacted me and said, <clears throat> you know, Scott, I want to do a course with you. And this is what I want to talk about, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? I said, That's great. I said, what's your purpose? Well, he says, I really want to get speaking gigs. And I figure if I do this course and you help me get 5,000 people into the course, I'll have a great I'll have lots of credibility. I'll have a great reputation. I can hand my prospect the course, say, watch me teach in front of a, you know, teach course. And uh, they'll love it. They'll see that there's 5,000 people. They'll see there's 55 star reviews and I'll get speaking gigs all over the place. Wonderful plan, right? Far better than I'm going to do one course and uh, make a million dollars. Be firm in your no, if it is a no. If it's not a no and you're just putting a little objection out there or whatever to test the person, stop it. Think about what your plans are, what it is you want to do with your life now. Understand that in 10 years, you'll look back and go, oh my God, what was I thinking? What was I doing? Not at all what I wanted. Or it was what I wanted, but I'm really unhappy about it. I mean, this is why, you know, I did a survey of CEOs, right? These guys have got all the money in the world, probably have no time. And they're unhappy and they're depressed and uh, whatever, right? They're drunk all the time or, you know, I don't know. The, the, the article is basically they're not very happy. Of course they're not because they fell into something. They went into a certain direction and then <clears throat> realized that they had a higher cost than what they thought. And that's all I want you to think about is what is the cost of the direction that you're going? What is the cost of not sitting down and being congruent? What does your heart want to do? What does your head want to do? What does your soul want to do? Uh, 
and get those things in line. And when you get them aligned, you're going to find out a whole bunch of amazing things. One of which is, is that there's a huge movement towards minimalism, right? Like people are saying, I don't need a house with seven bedrooms and six bathrooms and two kitchens and four swimming pools. That's not bringing me happiness. And so the millennials are rejecting what their parents did, which is exactly what every generation does. And they're looking at things from an entirely different point of view. And I love it because I really think that there's you have to live your life. You can't take your bank account with you when you go. So what I really wanted to talk to you about was the importance of understanding confidence and how it impacts your decision-making process. You may see somebody and go, well, you know, he really wasn't that confident when he was talking to me. You may not even be thinking that. But now I want you to be aware of it. Like, how confident was that guy when they spoke to me? What does that mean? doesn't mean it's a bad idea. Because the guy that really is confident will convince you and it's the wrong thing. And I want you to take a look at the word no and I want you to get over it. Practice it. If you do want to make courses as part of your marketing plan, I'm here, I'm waiting for you, and I'm excited to be working with you, if that's what you choose. This is Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, with today's Patent Power Podcasters Point from the south coast of Turkey. Love you all. I'm having a great time. Life is wonderful. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.